of course we know crazy things can happen out on the water. This is a boating channel, but we do realize here that it's not always craziness in boating. There are many different things that can go wrong out on the water, as can be seen right here. And of course, the causes of that chaos can vary as well, and we'll explore a little bit of that in this week's episode of Boneheaded Boaters of the Week. Now, I won't even pretend on this one here. I don't know a ton about aircraft, other than me getting on an aircraft, having a flight attendant bring me a beverage. Really, it's outside of my realm, so I'm not sure exactly what would have caused something like this to happen here. But I'll tell you what, I bet one of you knows go ahead and light it up in the comment section below and let me know why this would go on and that's a close call there with this propeller swinging next to my man's head which is just a little too close for comfort for me and speaking of being too close for comfort this is one of the things that can wreak havoc in boating as well when we get into tight channels and canals here it can make boating a difficult process when we find ourselves in these tight spots Every move must be meticulously planned. We must tread cautiously. The last thing you want to do is get out there and get a little crazy with the throttle because the next thing you know, bad things can happen. In these tight situations, if you decide you're going to be a little throttle happy, you're probably going to find yourself having some close calls. But there are some times in these situations where you will need throttle, and that's when you're having to deal with wind and current. If you find yourself in this situation where wind and current are taking control of your vessel, you're going to have to give enough throttle to power through it, but it's still a tricky balancing act. Too much throttle can still have negative results, and not enough throttle is not going to get you where you want to go. You'll find yourself in some hard spots. Here this cruise found themselves at the mercy of the wind and current as they tried to enter the channel at the Boynton boat ramp. Unfortunately, they just didn't have quite enough throttle at the time to get themselves under control. Now, of course, wind and current aren't the only obstacles we're going to deal with on the water. Another one that's featured quite often on this channel is going to be bridges. All right, Broncos guru. Looks like they didn't make it under the bridge successfully. Another one. Bridges really can wreak havoc in boating, as many times we'll have to go under them to get to destinations we'd like to get to. But unlike traveling in a car, bridges on the water don't typically have set heights like most bridges on our highways do. <laughs> under the tunnel. <laughs> But being honest, one of the things that really makes bridges difficult to navigate is the fact they pretty much encapsulate everything we just mentioned. They're typically in narrow passages. They typically have high current. And then once again, we're dealing with fluctuating heights. And that's where we get all the craziness that comes from bridges. And speaking of craziness, sometimes it's cut bridge craziness like we see right here. A couple months back, I ran across an Instagram handle called Cut Bridge Craziness. And it captures and features all the craziness that happens happens at Blindman Bridge in Gloucester, Massachusetts. As can be seen in these images here, it is a wild scene. They've got a heavy current, a low drawbridge, all in a tight channel, which just causes some absolute chaos as vessels try and navigate from Gloucester Harbor into the Blindman Canal. You never know what to expect as you see vessels try and navigate through this bridge. It really is a fine balancing act of throttle, height and control as you try and get through this channel especially when the current's moving as fast as it's moving here you can see this standing wave will bring vessels to a standstill but then add in the fact that this bridge can have upwards of a 10 foot tide swing sometimes i've seen this bridge with 12 foot of clearance and other times i see it with two foot so you may go out the bridge at one point in time and clear just fine but when you're coming back you may find it a little difficult to get your vessel underneath all these factors can make this area extremely difficult to navigate even in the most ideal conditions Conditions. But now imagine this one, throw all these factors in and then go ahead and toss in mechanical failure and things can get out of hand fast. I do have to give this captain props though, he tried to drop the anchor, he just couldn't get it to set before they hit the bridge, but he did at least make a last ditch effort to try and salvage the situation and avoid the collision before it happened. But. It's not always just mechanical failure, even if everything's working perfectly, that it still just may not be enough when you're trying to navigate a tight channel and a tight bridge, as can be seen in this situation here. Here the sailboat's trying to clear the Blindman Bridge and just does not even have enough power to fight the current, and well, the current eventually wins. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and check out Cut Bridge Craziness over on Instagram. He's got a ton of clips like this over there, and they're an absolute blast to watch. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boneheaded Boaters of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know, and you might see your stories over here. Just like Cut Bridge Craziness, Ashley Day, Beck Ping 20, Delina, Eric Royce, 
Miami Boat Ramps, Jordan Tobins, and T-Curls20 did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here.